Welcome to section 2.9c. All right, gentle people, what we're going to do this lecture is we are going to finish off our naming schemes and the last class of chemical compounds that I want to talk about are acids. So for now, the way that I want you guys to identify an acid is it's going to have a hydrogen in front of its molecular formula. And so when you see that, you're going to assume that it's going to be an acid. There are a few exceptions, and we'll talk about those later down, but not in this chapter. The first thing we want to do when we start to name acids is classify the acid as a binary acid or an oxy acid. Now, an oxy acid is something that is going to contain oxygen. Now, a lot of people consider a binary acid something that contains only two elements. I'm going to go ahead and expand this definition and say that a binary acid is going to be an H plus plus an anion, and that anion cannot have oxygen in it. But most of the time, a binary acid is just going to be two things coming together. One is going to be hydrogen, and then I'm going to have an element. So let's go ahead and talk about how we name a binary acid. So here are examples of binary acid. We have no oxygen in here. It's just going to be H plus an element. In this case, hydrogen and chlorine, and then hydrogen and bromine. So to name a binary acid, you're going to first put hydro in front of its name. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take the element's name, drop the later portion of the element's name, and replace it with IC. So for example, chlorine becomes chloric, bromine becomes bromic. And then finally, you're gonna put an acid at the end. So HCl is hydrochloric acid. HBr is hydrobromic acid. Now usually when we name acids, it's going to be in solution or it's going to be aqueous. Now there's this very odd rule and you guys don't need to know this. And this has to do when the acid's in the gaseous form. When it's in the gaseous form, you're just going to simply go back to how you name a molecular or covalent compound. So HCl gas is really hydrogen chloride gas. Again, you don't have to worry about this very niche rule. So let's go ahead and name the other type of acid, and that is the oxy acid. The oxy acids are things that contain oxygen. Most probably, this is going to be a polyatomic ion of oxygen. And so what you guys should remember is that the polyatomic ions usually end in it and eight if there's an oxygen in there. So what you're going to do is if you have something that ends with an it, you're going to drop that it and put ous. If it ends with an eight, what you're going to do is drop that eight and put IC, and this time you just simply put acid at the end of the name. So you're not going to go ahead and put hydro in front of these. So let's give you guys an example. So this right here we know is an acid because it has an H in the front of the molecular formula. So the next thing we'll note is this is an oxy acid. There's an oxygen in my polyatomic. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the name of that polyatomic ion. And in this case, it's NO3 minus, and this is called the nitrate ion. So I'm going to take that 8 out, and I'm going to replace that 8 with an IC. So this becomes nitric acid. Now let's take a look at this one, HNO2. Again, acid because of the hydrogen, NO2 has an oxygen, so an oxy acid. NO2 minus is going to be called the nitrite ion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that ITE out and replace it by an OUS. So HNO2 is called nitrous acid. What you guys can do is you can look at table 2.7 and 2.8. It gives you the molecular formula of the acid and how you would name it. What I would do is I would make flashcards of these and on one side put the molecular formula and on the other side go ahead and put the name. Go ahead and shuffle these out and then go ahead and test yourself. But let's go ahead and do some practicing with naming. So go ahead and name this compound.
Like I mentioned in the last lecture, I was going to go ahead and give you a quiz on naming a molecular compound. So what you guys will see here is this is made out of two nonmetals. So we're going to follow the scheme of naming a molecular or covalent compound. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the first element in this formula. And so what we have is a phosphorus. So I'm going to go ahead and write phosphorus out. And the second element that I have is iodine. And because it's the second element, I'm going to change that into iodide. Now what I have to do is I have to tell you how many of each atom is in this formula. So there's only one phosphorus, but since phosphorus appears in the front, I'm not going to put mono here. Now there are three iodides in here, so this becomes triiodide. And so that's going to be the name, phosphorus triiodide. All right, gentle people, go ahead and name this compound. All right, Jenna people, what we see is that there's an H in front, so this is an acid. I ask myself, does it contain oxygen? And so it does not contain oxygen, so this is a binary acid. So this is going to be H with the polyatomic CN minus. Now, if you guys remember your polyatomics, this is the cyanide ion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop the tail end of the cyanide and make this cyanic. I'm going to put a hydro in front. So this is going to be hydro, cyanic, and then finally acid. All right, gentle people, to finish off chapter two, here is all the naming that we've covered. So just to remind you guys, there are three major categories when we name things. Ionic compounds, molecular compounds, and acids. So here is a flow chart and you can follow each one of these routes depending on which type of compound you have. Well, I hope that made sense and remember to stay safe, Kim1A.